The Lark Knight rises. Quarterback injuries didn't slow down the Cougs in their matchup with New Mexico State. Tourney tonight, the BYU women's volleyball team is playing at home for the first round of the NCAA tournament. And holiday hoops. All I want for Christmas is Cougs. Find out BYU Ballers holiday traditions. I'm Sean Gordon. And I'm Taylor Lansford. It's the most wonderful time of the year and the best time of the day. It's time for the tube. The last football se uh, game of the uh, season, season was last, was last Saturday. Exactly. Make it stop, By Sean. the time we're back on air, it'll be like basketball midway through Make and football stop. will be a distant memory. But before we forget, mm -hmm. let's get to that game. BYU faced its second Aggie team this season. This one in the land of enchantment. New Mexico State's had a subpar season, and I don't mean that in golf terms. Our Cougars started out flat, missing a field goal right here on their first drive and then later giving up this touchdown pass to Paris Scoggins of New Mexico State. And the Cougars trailed early 7-zip, but that didn't last long. Have you ever heard of Deja, 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 Deja Vu? James Lark and Cody Hoffman hooked up for five touchdowns. Hoffman playing leapfrog with a defender there. And then in the fourth, James Lark, okay, now you're just showing off. Nobody within a city block of Cody Hoffman as he takes it 64 yards to the house as BYU finishes off its regular season on a high note 50 to 14. James Lark got his first career start Saturday in his last regular season game as a Cougar. His 384 yards are the most by a BYU quarterback in his first start and he became just the 10th BYU quarterback to ring up six touchdowns, adding his name to a list along with names like McMahon, Detmer and Young. Not bad for his first career start. As a result of that performance, some college football hardware hit Hoff's hands. This week, junior Cody Hoffman earned National Wide Receiver of the Week awards. Um, Cody Hoffman caught a school record five touchdown passes and became the only, the second FBS player to do it this season. With a career high of 182 yards on 12 catches, Hoffman pushes his season total to 1,134 yards and senior Riley Stevenson claimed National Punter of the Week award as well. And it's official the Cougars opponent in the San Diego County Credit Union Poinsettia Bowl will be San Diego State. The Aztecs are co-champs of BYU's former conference, the Mountain West. And they head into the bowl game 9-3. and three. San Diego State typically gains its yards through the air, but this season it's their running back who powers the 16th ranked rushing offense in the nation. Sophomore Adam Muima is getting 6.4 yards per carry and has over 1,300 rushing yards this season but it'll be hard pressed to keep up that pace against a stout BYU defense. Meanwhile, the Cougars have a newfound offense and senior backup or, or possibly starting quarterback James Lark, who had those six touchdowns in that route of New Mexico State. And the ongoing QB controversy has been the story of BYU football for the past three seasons, and Coach Mendenhall has yet to name a starter for the bowl game. One thing's for sure, though, the Aztecs will bring the heat against whoever starts for BYU, as SDSU's defense has sacked opposing quarterbacks this season 30 times. It's time to go get your copies of Sports Illustrated, BYU fans, because a Cougar footballer is headlining the cover. Ezekiel Ansa is a virtual unknown prior to the football season and now is the talk of NFL scouts, projected to go into the first round of the upcoming draft. Ziggy will be featured in next week's issue detailing its journey from Ghana to the gridiron. And switching sports, BYU women's soccer found themselves in a position they'd only been in t once before, the Elite Eight. And a win against powerhouse North Carolina would punch a ticket to the College Cup. Both teams got an early goal, but then the defense took over. The chance both sides, but neither team could capitalize. So on to overtime again. In the first OT, Lindsey Lizenby Cutshaw breaks away right here with the goalie out of position. But the defender makes a stunning save. And Rachel Manning had a good shot with a header on the ensuing corner kick, but another nice save. And then the Tar Heels made the Cougs pay in OT number two as Crystal Dunn puts the golden goal in to send NC to the College Cup and end BYU's season. 
In football, it's the Heisman, but in women's soccer, it's the Herman, and one might be headed for BYU's Legacy Hall. Lindsay Lidzenby Cutshaw is in the running for the highest individual award in intercollegiate Division I soccer, the 2012 Missouri Athletic C Cup Herman Trophy. BYU senior sweeper may just sweep one more play before her time is up. And speaking of awards, the 2012 WCC Postseason Volleyball Awards are out and four Cougars earned individual recognition. Head coach Sean Olmstead took Coach of the Year and the players were just as outstanding with Jennifer Hampson as Player of the Year, Alexa Gray as Freshman of the Year, and last but not least, Nicole Warner took home Co-Defensive Player of the Year honors. The Cougars host New Mexico State in the NCAA Tournament tonight. In fact, the women's volleyball team is just seven hours away from playing the first round of the tournament. CoogTube reporter Skylar Hardman has been dodging spikes all week following the um, volleyball team. So Skylar, what is the, how is the volleyball team preparing for the tournament tonight? Well, actually, the team is just going about business as usual, which might be the best advantage heading into the tournament. Last year, BYU women's volleyball was left out in the cold watching two conference foes dance their way into December. But this season, the Cougars came roaring back. Redemption's a good word for it, but I like to say that um, all of our hard work has paid off because we, weren't, we were just barely kept out of the tournament last year, and so we really worked hard this past season so that we could make it again. The Cougars went on to a 13-3 WCC record in a conference that sent six teams to the NCAA tournament. That was enough for BYU to bring home their first WCC championship, earn the 12th overall seed in the tournament, and host the first two rounds. They can rest up, they can feel like they're in their environment, and we practice here, so and we get to play here, and so I think that's a huge advantage for us, and we're comfortable here in the Smith Fieldhouse, and we love being here. The team's record reflects that love. The Cougars are undefeated in the Smith Fieldhouse this season, winning 36 of 38 sets. But New Mexico State didn't come all this way just to be put out to pasture. The Aggies only have one senior on the squad, but are led by a very experienced head coach. Mike Jordan has 330 career wins in 15 seasons and is in the NCAA tournament for the sixth time in 10 years. They have their strong points, and so we'll focus on what they do well and then try to stop them and just run our offense from there. Like, we'll just take care of business. BYU is stellar at home, but with a head coach and a roster full of players brand new to the tourney, it should be a good game. One thing that may bode well for the Aggies is the fact that the last time they advanced to the second round of the NCAA tournament, they beat a West Coast Tom Conference team in St. Mary's. So if we win tonight, we'll go into the second round. What can we expect for that game? Well, going into the second round, we're going to face a tough opponent either way. And actually, another advantage to being at home, BYU will be able to go scout that opponent tonight when Oklahoma will play Arizona State at 5 o'clock in the Smithfield House. I hope it happens. Thanks, Skyler. And when Kutub returns hot matic the Cougars super sophomore is dominating defenses, but was his hot hand enough to take down the Montana Grizzlies? And Parker Style, the notorious BYU recruit, made his official visit to Provo, and Cougar fans did their best to impress the Chicago native. Jabari Ball bounced its way into Provo this past week, and fans were ready to roll out the blue carpet for the big show. Jabari Parker took his official visit to Provo over Thanksgiving weekend, but that didn't stop the Marriott Center from having its first sellout of the year. Fans and students came with signs, t-shirts, and chants for Jabari to show off the exciting atmosphere of the Marriott. Along with other recruits, Jabari and his family got a front row seat to the action. This marks Jabari's last official visit and BYU fans now get to anxiously await his decision in hopes that he chooses the right. And there was plenty of action in Energy Solutions Arena on Wednesday and the Utah Jazz were on the road, but both BYU basketball squads invaded ESA and the women went first. The Cougars took on Creighton of the Missouri Valley Conference and BYU took control early, taking the opening tip to the hoop for the layup and the Cougars kept the lead. Right here, Jojan Harry hits the fadeaway jumper, and then she turns around and pays it forward, finding Morgan Bailey for the layup. And Kylie Maeda provided the outside punch, hitting this one from beyond the arc. And the Cougars led 35 to 19 at the half, but the Blue Jays kept chipping away at the lead. This three cut it to 11, and then Lexi Eaton added fuel to the fire, getting the flagrant for tripping. And the Creighton roared back to send it into OT, and then completed the comeback with the 65-62 win. In the second half, the doubleheader saw the men take on Montana, and BYU jumped out early, taking the 14-2 lead, led by six quick ones from Tyler Hawes. More on him later. 
The D was solid as well. Brandon Davies had two of the Cougars' four blocks on the night. And then Josh Sharp had a big night. He finished with a career-high 13 points and added eight boards. He's broken his career high in points in each of the last four games, going from seven to eight to nine to 13. And Haas entered the game having scored at least 20 in all six games to start the season. And a seventh would tie a BYU record. But with BYU up big, Haas sat the final five minutes and finished just short with 18. But it didn't matter as the Cougars played one of their most complete games of the young season, walking away from the ESA with the 85-60 win. In 2003, the Cougars played for the first time at Energy Solutions Arena. CougTube reporter Mary Blanchard explains the reason behind this now annual Cougar roadie to Salt Lake City. Taylor, the trips up north don't look like they're coming to an end anytime soon, and while no one is complaining about them, I did have one question. Why? I have no idea why they're playing here tonight. Why not? <laughs> I have no idea. For one week a year at the Marriott Center, the ballers are out and the dancers are in as Christmas around the world takes over. But instead of losing a week of the season, the Cougar basketball teams borrow the jazz joint. Yeah, the Energy Solutions Arena is great. The, the staff up there and the management for the jazz, they're extremely accommodating. It's fun because we all have dreams to play at a professional level, so it's, just, it's fun to be here. Uh, fun atmosphere. Booking the venue is easy enough and the players love it, but it's also important to have the sixth man on board. While there were definitely less students in attendance compared to home court, The Rock was still making their presence known, rising and shouting. I think that it probably got out some students that don't normally go to basketball games just because it could be a fun experience. BYU marketing gives students an assist in finding their way up to Energy Solutions Arena when the Cougars take the court, like buy one get one free tickets. It was actually just the roommates reminding me, hey, we can go get tickets. You get two tickets apiece, so that's kind of why we decided to do it. The Cougars will play at least one more game up in Jazztown, but not because of Christmas around the world. Upcoming opponent Virginia Tech requested to play at Energy Solutions in a call for more neutral territory. Teams like Oregon last year and Virginia Tech admit they're seriously intimidated by the electric atmosphere in the Marriott Center. Now, BYU could take a third trip up to Capital City depending on if they make the NCAA tournament and their seed. ESA will host the second and third rounds. Sean? Thanks, Mary. And the men's basketball team is off to Ames, Iowa tomorrow for the, its first official away game against Big 12 foe Iowa State. Cougtube reporter Royce Hinton is in the newsroom. Royce, what's it going to take for the Cougars to blow away the Cyclones? Sean, last weekend, Iowa State lost a pair of games uh, to ranked opponents. This week, they're hungry for another home win. State brings an 11-game home court winning streak to Saturday's matchup, and BYU knows a win won't come easily. Iowa State's a really talented um, team, an athletic team. We played a couple of those teams already, like Florida State, Notre Dame. The Cyclones are 4-0 all-time against the Cougars, but their last battle was in December of 2000. ISU knows how to play well against WCC teams, boasting a 10-1 all-time record against the conference. We're ready to go. I mean, it's going to be it's going to be a real challenge, and they, they just got beat twice over the weekend uh, by two really good teams, and so it'll be a battle. Coming into the game ranked second nationally in rebounding, Iowa State knows how to grab the boards. Offensively, the Cyclones average over 80 points per contest, but where ISU can really hurt the Cougars is their depth. The team is getting nearly half of its points off the bench. Uh, we just need to be extra focused going into the game, um, specifically on the defensive end, I think, uh, to make sure that we're ready to get stops and, and to defend guys that maybe are sometimes more athletic. Um, but I think as a team as a whole, we're excited for that opportunity. While the Cougars haven't played the Cyclones in 12 years, senior Will Clyburn will be a familiar face. He played against BYU twice during the 2010-2011 season as a running Ute before he transferred to ISU. Now he's their leading scorer. Speaking of Utah, um, BYU will play a trio of in-state rivalry games starting next week when they host Utah State and Utah. The following week, they'll head up to Ogden to play the Wildcats of Weber State. In the newsroom, Royce Hinton, CougTube. Well, Royce, besides Clyburn, are there any other players for Iowa State that the Cougars should be worried about? Other than Clyburn, Jr. Melvin Ejim is one to look out for down low in the post. He averages 10 points per game and 9 boards, so definitely look out for him tomorrow afternoon. So Ejim and Clyburn will know who to look out for tomorrow. Thanks, Royce. When Coog Tube comes back, exam game plans. The Cougars are act acing their opponents, but how is the mental game? Find out how the athletes are prepping for their finals Cougar style. And bring a sweater and possibly an umbrella to tonight's volleyball game. 11 game time weather when we return.
As we take a look outside, cloudy, uh, cooler temperatures, but not freezing. It's kind of what we've been seeing all week. Uh, we haven't seen any rain or snow, but today we might. We do have a small chance of rain. Right now we're sitting at around 52 degrees, um, and throughout the day it will, that, that will increase up to 59 degrees. Uh, humidity at 40%, wind speeds at 10 and 40% chance of rain throughout today. If we don't see it today, we might even see it tonight. So by the time uh, the volleyball game comes around uh, by 7 p.m., we will have a 6% chance of rain. So bring your jacket and your umbrella um, if you're planning on going to that. Temperatures will be all the way down to 40s in the evening and we might even see it in the upper 30s uh, by late, late this evening with wind speeds at around six miles per hour. But turning out to southern Utah, uh, temperatures are they're actually not too, not, too, uh, not, not too far away from the temperatures we're experiencing here. Uh, just a bit warmer as always. Temperatures in the 60s today, down into the 40s. Pretty steady uh, all weekend. On Sunday, there'll be a bit of a cold front coming in, uh, bringing the temperature down to 39 degrees on Monday, but then back up into the 40s on Tuesday evening. So, but in northern Utah, as I said, the temperatures are, are pretty similar. Uh, in the 50s today and throughout the weekend, pretty steady in the 40s in the evening. And then on Sunday, all the way up into the, all the, way up into the 60s, but then during the day, we're gonna have a cold front come in, bringing in a bit of rain and uh, uh, high, high uh, wind speeds up to 25 miles per 33. So drop, the temperature drops in half and those, um, that temperature will, kinda, will continue on Monday. Oh, and on Sunday, we also have rain and even maybe some snow in the evening. Um, so kind of a, an exciting weekend in, in weather. Sean and Taylor, back to you. Thanks, Matt. As the semester winds down, athletes have more to worry about than blocks and jump shots. They have final exams. CougTube reporter Sarah Burchett shows us how BYU athletics helps the Cougars make the grade. Fans sometimes forget that BYU student athletes are students first, and that's where the Student Athlete Academic Center hits the court. It is a little bit unique, but one thing I like to say is that what we offer here is all in one area what is on several or is available to any student several areas on campus. The NCAA requires all universities with Division I sports to help athletes stay on top of their grades. The Academic Center is one way BYU fulfills that commitment. Between practice and class and trying to maintain eligibility and scholarships, sometimes athletes need a little bit of help and that's when over 70 student tutors come into play. My grades are majorly dependent on this because without tutors, I probably wouldn't get as high as grade as I do. I think it's really great that we have students tutoring students um, because as a student, you've been through those classes before and you can see it from their perspective. The Academic Center also has alumni mentors, advisors, and learning specialists on hand to guide athletes through each semester, help them prepare for graduation, and tackle the real world. And our areas of support maybe extend into areas that maybe other centers don't, kind of the holistic approach to an education. Um, it's not just about academics and grades, it's about the whole person. This is kind of academic support Gangnam style up here. We really, we really want to help. On BYU campus, Sarah Burchett, Coog 2. And I think that we all hope and pray that there won't be, be final exams in the future with these athletes, but there'll be others. Yeah, maybe some final fours or some final rounds in their future. I sure hope so. And when Cougtube returns, predicts it's a four-way tie, so we'll have the first ever Cougar smack-off to crown a champ and win the Cougar. We'll be right back. And Christmas, Cougars, BYU hoop, Hoops is in the holiday spirit. Find out how the Cougars are bustling out the Christmas the Cougar men's basketball squad is on a three-game winning streak as they near the holiday season. And as Cougtube's Jake Edmonds tells us, even for the players, there's no place like home for the holidays. We're headed into the final month of 2012, and nothing screams December like Christmas and basketball. It's the best. I, I'm excited. I love the holiday season. Craig Cusick took the starting spot from sophomore Matt Carlino last week, but he's in more of a giving mood when Christmas rolls around. Everyone makes one, one really good present. So you don't go out and buy it, you make it, so it's, it's a little bit more meaningful. Tyler Haas is becoming one of the all-time greats at BYU, averaging almost 23 points per game as a sophomore. This is his first holiday season since his mission, and he's looking forward to the night before Christmas. Christmas Eve, uh, we usually get pajamas, and we have a big dinner. Uh, we have. We have crab legs, king crab legs. It's like the best dinner of the year. One of the Haas family traditions is a bit less Christmassy. We actually, we watch Beauty and the Beast. The Cougars head to Texas on December 21st to take on Baylor and return home on December 27th to face Northern Arizona. That window should give the players just enough time to come home for the holidays. If we can work it out to where we can prepare for the next game uh, and not shortchange uh, 
you know, that preparation, then uh, we'll give them as many days off as we can. That little time to spend with family may be the best Christmas present Coach Rose can give his players. In Provo, Jake Edmonds, CougTube. The Cougars' December 27th matchup against Northern Arizona shouldn't take too long to prepare for. The Lumberjacks are just 2-4, and four, averaging less than 64 points a game. So it looks like Haas might get those crab legs after all. Since it was a four-way tie because of last week, we're going to have a first-ever CoogTube Smackdown. We're each going to get 20 seconds to explain why we should win predictions. I'm going to go first, <laughs> start it off. Everyone gather in. Come closer to me. Now, listen. I work with all men, and I think I've held my own tying all three reporters and Matt and Sean. I should win, and I've been very loyal to BYU, even though I thought they were going to lose. I still picked them. I think that makes me a very loyal fan. L loyal or not, uh, I'm, I'm actually just going to go with strength and numbers here. Um, let's put all the reporters in a room, and uh, we'll duke it out with, uh, with you three. So there's five on three. I'm pretty sure we could take you guys. I don't even need 20 seconds. <laughs> yeah, strength in numbers exactly. Two heads are better than one, so you guys have had the unfair advantage. And then Taylor's been piggybacking my picks half the year, so, I mean, we, we, we got to look at what happens there. And then Matt's the weather guy. I mean, we, we can't give the victory to the weather guy. Come on. All you really need to look at is this last week, who improved the most. I got both right this last week, predicted both right. And if you're going to give it to the reporters, I don't know, maybe they're going to cut it up into a few pieces or something, and each one can get a piece. If that's the case, they can have it. But, you know, this last week, I predicted both right. Sean, just, that was brutal. It was a little brutal. That was brutal. I'm sorry, Matt. We're just, we're just waiting for the announcement. Mm -hmm. Our producers are going to announce who's the winner. Come on, guys, make the right decision. The votes have been tallied, and it oh. looks like the winner of our 2012 fall edition of Predix is oh. the relegated to the newsroom, Jake. Yeah. yeah, that's right. I'd like to thank my fellow reporters. <laughs> I demand a recount. I demand a recount, 2000 <laughs> style in Florida. I demand yeah, a recount. Say, there's there's a little bit of bias there. No. But that's Cougtuber Friday, November 30th. And if you want to check out more stories of what we did today or share with your friends, check out the Cougtube section of our website, 11news.byu.edu. Thanks for joining us. Have a great afternoon. And of course, go Can't Cougars. Believe this.